Hi, I'm Dr. Yosef with Daring, and the purpose of today's video is to talk about whether you should slow down your rate of taper if you develop, uh, I guess, difficult withdrawal symptoms while you're coming off uh, antidepressants and benzodiazepines. This video is a two-part series, and the first part of it, I'm going to talk about uh, people who do not have a post-acute withdrawal type injury or a, or a protracted withdrawal. I'm going to talk about people who just want to come off these medications and they're not having significant problems because that's a lot of it, that's an easier situation. So, um, for someone who doesn't have an injury, between five and ten percent cuts every two to four weeks, I think, is a good place to start. And then when you get towards the bottom, you slow the speed down. And what do I mean towards the bottom? I mean um, when you get around to what the lowest effective dose is. So, you know, if this is uh, Lexapro, that might be five milligrams. If it's Xanax, that might be uh, 0 0.5 milligrams. Whatever the lowest dose is, it's typically the one that people are started on. When you get there, you want to kind of slow things down uh, even more. It's uh, called the hyperbolic taper. So if you're in that position, here's what you should do. Um, the process of kind of tapering yourself down uh, gradually in this way is that you want to expose, you want to remove that agent that's been in your brain, which is causing all of these comp uh, compensatory changes in there. Um, you want to remove that. And then so the opposing systems that were kind of compensating for the presence of that drug can really be exposed. And, and so, you know, if this is with an antidepressant, you know, you may have more uh, irritability. Uh, because of those opposing forces kind of now becoming exposed. If it's a benzodiazepine, it's, it's very much the same. There's more excitation and um, anxiety that comes out. And so the process of going down in this way is really to do it gradually, allow your brain to be exposed to these, you know, these, these changes and, and then readapt to them. And withdrawal is not, it's not supposed to be easy. I mean, the what I tell people is you're, you're really looking for moderate, uh, moderate symptoms. So it's mild to moderate symptoms as you're going down. If they hit severe and, and by severe, it's a judgment call. But usually what I like to think of is uh, you're not able to do the things that you normally want to do. So if you're unable to go to work, if you're unable to fulfill your duties, that's, that's severe. And if you are someone who does not have, you know, one of these kind of protracted withdrawal type issues, that's when you need to slow your rate of taper down. If you're going at 10%, you should probably consider going down at 5% next time. And, um, and, that, and that's how I would advise someone to continue. Okay, so moving on to the next part. Now, now we're gonna talk about people who are in the unlucky category where they've developed a post-acute withdrawal symptom from the antidepressants or a protracted withdrawal from the benzodiazepines. Uh, this is actually where it gets a lot trickier because those types of neurological injuries, um, their nature is that they, they flare up randomly over time. Um, and so I have a lot of videos on, on what that looks like. But as people are kind of coming, as after someone has this injury, they have this typical pattern um, in a lot of people of waves and windows where you can go for a few months where you're, you, you know, you're moderately uncomfortable because of the injury, but it's tolerable. And then you can get thrown into periods where for, you know, roughly two months or so, you have really severe symptoms. And that's, and that's the wave. And so one of the things that, you know, one of the things you want to accomplish when you're kind of tapering someone off the drug that's caused this is, I mean, you, you, want, to get the, you want to get the taper over and done with. A lot of the times the people who are on these drugs, they just want to be off. And sometimes this process is going to take 18 months, two years, something like that. And so when you slow the rate of your taper, I mean, essentially you could be extending it for another year, a year and a half. So there's big consequences there, I think. And what, what I guess you don't want to do is needlessly slow the rate of the taper <clears throat> um, down. And so how could this happen? So let's say you're progressing quite nicely on five on five milligram cuts and then you sorry not five milligram five percent cuts every you know three to four weeks and then all of a sudden you do a cut and then you know four or five days later you start feeling really bad and you and you end up in one of these waves and then you say you know oh my god you know like 
am I tapering too fast? And obviously the trauma about it comes up because a lot of people have developed these post-acute withdrawal problems because they were like rapidly detoxed off the medications. And then they start to say, you know, whoa, five, five percent cuts, that is way too fast. This is really tricky and this is kind of just how I approach it with my patients. What, what I usually tell people to do in this situation is, you know, let, let, let's, just, let's just stop and let's just hold and let's just see how long it takes for these symptoms to resolve. And sometimes that could be two, two months, you know, sometimes it could be up to three months, just waiting for things to simmer down. And then if they're comfortable with it and if they're on the same page as me where they're saying, you know what, I think we're moving at a reasonable pace and I don't want to slow it down anymore because I'd like to be off. I would invite them to actually try that cut again, you know, after they've stabilized, you know, let's try do another 5% cut. And if they tolerate it, then that means at least to me that it was actually more likely, you know, that flare up that they had, it was more likely that it was actually just due to a, uh, a wave, you know, a, a coincidental wave that just came in the background and there was no need to, to slow the rate of taper. But if we did that 5% cut again, and then that similar pattern emerged where a couple of days later, bang, big flare up of symptoms and it lasted. And, and it, it was more, and it lasts, you know, it's more than just an anxiety reaction where some, you know, cause that's pretty common as well. You do a cut and then people can become very anxious. But if it's again, this thing that lasts, you know, longer than, than a couple of days, then I would say, okay, let's, let's kind of slow the, slow things down a little bit. Let's put you on, you know, two, you know, 3% cut or something like that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Um, tell me what you think about that, that, that method. Um, and it's a tricky one. You know, I, I, I try and be mindful of getting people off in a safe way, but also, as, you know, you know no, making it no longer than it needs to be. So I hope this video was helpful and um, thank you for watching.